Hey, it's your girl K J. Coming back out to you one more time. So as you might know, I'm a forced mom. So if it's the first time seeing me, please subscribe. Please share. Um, I'm really trying to grow my channel. I think it's about time. At this point, it's about time. And a lot of things are going on in my life. And I, you know, I'm gonna do my vlogs. I'm trying to get really out, out there and do what I gotta do. But we'll see what happens. So anyway. If you don't know, I'm a foster mom. I do a lot of different things, honestly. It's not only being a foster mom. Like, I feel like this is so damn close. I'm not only being a foster mom. I'm a regular mom. Which is, a mom is a mom, right? So if a foster or not, mom is a mom. Um, I'm an advocate for people who are in shelter or homeless or unhoused. They're always trying to make unhoused also like so uh, people are just unhoused. Boy, they don't have no place to live. Like, but anyway. That's not what even this video is about, but that's my washing machine. I'm getting a new one tomorrow. I'm so grateful because this thing has not been doing a full load. Not even a point. It's in my vlogs. I'm not gonna just like say it over again. And right now, it's just not the time and space for it. But I'm a foster mom. This video is basically gonna be, um, I wanna say pros and cons about being a foster parent. And a foster parent who already has their own bio kids or other kids in general in their home, because it could be like a, a, a grandma who they do have a certain age limit on it. So, but grandmas can foster, of course. But um, say if you're an auntie who never who has somebody else's kid, but they end up doing foster care, but those kids already in your house because they're technically like one of your nieces or you know somebody related to you. The point is that if you're a person who already has kids, no matter how you got them. <laughs> Um, and you want to become a foster parent. These are the pros and some of the cons. I, you know me. Most of the time, I write nothing down. It come off the throne, the throne dome, the dome, dome, dome. So, um, I ain't write nothing down. But um, if you don't know, I already have a six-year-old daughter, which is KK. You see her now and again on the videos. Girl, stay in there, okay? While I'm doing the video, don't forget, okay? Stay. I said, girl, I said, stay in there. Thank God you dressed. You see, these kids don't allow you to be great. I don't know why. I told her, I told her that I was doing a video. But she doesn't want to see me be great. I don't know why. Anyway, honestly, I like the quality of this. I like this probably even better. But as you know, this, with cameras, it's all about lighting. Like, because this and my camera is also 4K, but I feel like this can be crisper sometimes. I don't know. It has its moments. But also, when I look at that little screen, I even, that's not, that's not, we're not doing about equipment right now. Anyway, so I have, if you don't know, I have a six year old daughter named KK. The girl used to in the back. I'm trying to come out the bathroom. Thank God she was dressed because I didn't have to record this over. And nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. I'm just coming from church. So I didn't get my life together. It's like, it's after 12. We just came home. Girl, choir rehearsal complicated. <laughs> anyway, so I'm a foster mom. I've been doing it for six months. So I, I was thinking of doing a six months update. All right, I'm gonna do a six months update. So far in the past, I started January 6th of 2020. I started being a foster parent in December 2021, but I didn't get a kid until January 6th, 2020. I got a next child, I would say two weeks later. No. I got her two weeks before Valentine's Day, February. The reason why I know that because the incident happened, I had to leave her somewhere on Valentine's Day. So I know Valentine's Day is a significant number. <laughs> yeah, so but if you don't know Valentine's Day, it's February 14th. I'm just saying, same day every year. It's like Christmas, same day every year, okay? Um, So just like your birthday, same day every year. So, all right. I think when you become a foster parent and you have kids already in your home, you have to discuss um, certain things with them. How they're going to share toys. But if you have a teenager, I feel like it's much different. I never experienced that, so I can't really talk about that. But um, even with a teenager, I think you have to say, how are we going to share the room? What are we going to share with bed sheets? You might think that's the minute things, but people be are, people kill over less. So I feel like you should have these discussions with your kids. When a foster kid come in, you can discuss things and make them feel at home. Because they don't want them to be in your house and don't feel at home. That's one thing you don't want them to do. They already come from a bad situation. They, or just coming out of situation. You don't know what their background is before they get to you. You know some things, but it's not a lot. And it's better if you make them feel welcome than make them, don't make them feel, don't be standoffish to the kids, all right? That's basically the gist of what I'm trying to say. 
um, to talk about what age you might want. Um, my daughter would prefer, she don't want a baby, she loved the baby that I got, but she'll prefer that the next kid come to be three or four years old. Nobody her age, everybody has to be younger. Um, this is things we discussed beforehand. Um, she doesn't mind a kid with disability. Um, I, I asked her before, can we take a deaf child? Before she was doing sign language in school, but then after this year, which is kind of funny, she ended up doing sign language in school, and this is like literally months after I asked her, and she said, but she was like thinking, like, mm, yeah. And, and now she, she wouldn't mind it because she would like to learn more and be more, and, you know, she likes that whole world now, so I'm trying to get her more into sign language too. So I'm trying to get my daughter involved in a lot of stuff. I think you need to talk about um, how would you share your toys? How would your room be set up? All these different things, things you might, you might think about it, but you really don't go in depth and kids forget things very easily. You tell them one thing right now and 36 minutes, 0.5 seconds later, you're like, what? Since I just told you, I thought it'd be happy to tell me, mommy, you can write it down. And I hate writing. I hate reading. I do a lot of it, but I don't do much writing. I do, you know, my writing is, I, I like like a doctor. It's, it's a hot mess. It's a hot mess. But, um, I feel like a pro is is that you get to help somebody. You get to help out a family. If you're doing foster care, if you don't know, foster care is when you give, when you take a child into your home and you keep them for a, a certain amount of time. It could be a week, it could be two weeks, it could be a month. It all depends why the kid is there. If they're taken away um, of their respite, they're taken away for a certain reason like domestic abuse, drug use, or somebody parent has died. You just don't know. It's, every situation is definitely different. Every kid thing is different. Everything that goes into each child is different. So um, it could be taken away from many different things. It could be up in your house for a short time or a long time. And they they right parents still have rights long they're alive, and their families still have rights over them. You know, kind of thing. I want to say if the parents are not there, if they have like a grandmother, whatever. They try to keep them as kin, whatever. And if they can, they can go to the grandmother. Or grandpa or you know aunt uncle whatever you know that kind of the situation um the pro is that you get to help somebody you get to help a kid who probably came out of something crazy if they came from a crazy situation um you get to help them build a life back to where it needs to be if it's a baby you know it's much harder you just get them stability basically because babies as much they don't talk but they do observe a lot they, they cannot say how they feel but they're feeling something you know um what else I feel like a, a pro is you can have somebody in your house to love on and to enjoy family time with. And if you have another child, so they can have a sibling to come home to and have fun with and things like that. Like, if y'all know me, I hate to edit. And this child gonna have me edit. Why would you do this to me? Why would you do this to your mom? And I told her not to come out. It's like, like, like I didn't warn her. I told her I'm taping. You know it's my fault though. I'm the adult. I take accountability. I should have put the camera right there. I know she always do shenanigans and foolishness. What happened when you got kids? That's what happened when you got kids. They come for you. They come for you. Why? Why? Anyway. So um so that's I think the pros about it. Um you get to change a child's life, like for the better. You know, if you're a good foster mom. If you're a, a father, um, if you're a bad one, you're going to make that child even wor life worse than it was. Please don't be that person. <laughs> I'm just saying. So um, I think those are the pros of being a foster parent. And just having the joy of a child, like to see them laugh. You know, if you have the first talk. I know for a fact, unless a per like, let me get into that later. Con. Con, con, con. Most people, they want the baby. The next child I get, the funny thing, I might say that, and I might even get more babies. And the thing about it, long they come to my house, I'm going to love them. So I might be talking about my, my, my smack. And I don't know what God have in store for me. He'd be like, sis, shut your mouth and sit down. I got something for you. I got a new assignment for you. But um, at this moment, <laughs> I don't want nobody who can't walk, who is not made to potty training. And I think that's it. Because... I don't think it's fair that <laughs> you do all this work and they go back to the house. I'm not saying you're like, oh, that's work because being a parent is work in itself. But, um, I, I just, and babies are kind of boring. I'm, I'm sorry. Babies are hella boring. They pee, they drool, they eat, they poop, they 
can't talk. Babies are boring. I'm sorry. People love it. Babies are boring. And they can't, certain things they can't even go to. Like, they can't understand the assignment. Because they a baby. Like, they can't even get the assignment. Because they a baby. So, baby, not for Mimi. Mm -mm. I know that kind of is, I can't, I can't say I can't. Because the thing about it, if I got pregnant right now, which I would love that, but I'm not a Virgin Mary, so I could be Mary 22, but then I would have to have Jesus come back in the world. Do I want him to come back right now? Maybe we need to come back, him to come back right now because the world's kind of crazy. But um, if God is making me pregnant right now, like, get pregnant, girl. Um, if it's my own baby and I know I'm keeping that baby, not, you're not going like a tussle with the parent. Not like you should be tussling because you're foster care. You're not tussling with anybody and what the judge say, what the judge go, and what the parent make sure the parents are doing. What they, not you don't make sure, but the parents should make sure that they're doing the right thing and whatever. Oh, if you don't know, adoption is when you get to keep the baby. The rights of the parents are deter um, determined. It's um cut off, and you get to keep the child and adopt them. That's the net. Basically, they come to be your kid. Like you get new birth certificates, everything like that under your name. So that's what between foster care and adoption. Um. Con is when a baby comes in. <laughs> Honestly, my, my baby is good. She hardly cries. She likes to have her own way, but I think a lot of kids do that. And, you know, a little tantrum here and there. But she, honestly, she's a very good kid. Um, She hardly cries. She loves new people, which I don't like that. I don't like that. I hate that. I, the same thing Katani used to do. So hopefully it breaks out of her. I'm not about that. Like, it's like you get kidnapped, sis. You be too damn friendly. People pick your friend and run. And I just, I'm like, my baby. And so, I watched a video a couple months ago. It happened in the Bronx. And this lady was walking with her kids. Mind you, you know most times kids are in the back of their parent. But I tell her you don't stay in the back of me going go in front of me because the kids were looking so hell. And somebody tried to kidnap her son right in front of her. Bro, I think I want to say she's Hispanic. I want to say she's Hispanic. It don't matter what race she was. I'm just, I was just saying. Um, she went for her baby. She got that baby out the way. Bro, they messed with the wrong one that day. Because they did. I'm just saying. But, um, so... And what I can say, con. When they're in foster care, you get attached to the kids, and then if they have to leave you, that's another problem. Or you get a kid where you and your kid, your kid and that kid does not get along. That could be a problem. That could be a con. Um, they might be too much for you. You didn't realize how much. Because the thing about it, the energy could say one thing. And what the kid actually, what I've learned, the kid could be actually a different way because of other things that have been happening. Even though they came maybe into the um, agency fine. Not like fine, but they have trauma because they came, they take away from their parents. But they came, you know, pretty good. And by the time they get to you, they're kind of broken in pieces. But do you have the time and the energy? You have to make sure you have the time, energy, the know-how. Make sure you're on top with the therapist. You have to really be together on your stuff with these kids. And sometimes it can be overwhelming if you already have other kids to worry about your kid plus maybe other foster kids or a, you know it could be a, a, a whole handful especially if you have a single mom like myself um con i feel like i have more cons than pros i don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing but um i think i have more cons than pros and the thing about it i feel like my pros are just so like you're helping somebody i feel like the, to me that's bigger than anything else like you should come into I honestly came into foster care because I want to adopt, but learning about it and going through the training, I want to be able to help families. I want to be able to um, make a difference. Like, I think anything I do, I want to make sure I'm making a difference. How can I make a person's day or make persons, like, different things, you know what I'm saying? So, I definitely believe um, I'm here to make a difference in the life, in people's lives. So, I want to do that, you know? Um, so... So I think that's like a big umbrella over it. No matter how much pros I put out there, I think helping is just generally a good thing. So it might sound like I have a bad, you know, con list, like, you know, a whole bunch of things I can list off. But um, it can be like, you know, it could be a lot. It can, it can be a lot. Um, I think you have to just make sure you and your, the, the kids you already have in your home talk about if the kid who, the new kid in the house will be a good fit for your family. And... When a kid is not there after probably a couple of days. That's not probably something sound bad, but, you know, sometimes kids have to adjust. And you have to make sure the kids in your home where you already have is okay. And you kind of reassure them, like, everything's going to be all right. I'm here. Anything, you got to talk to me. 
kind of thing. You can't make them feel like, oh, because especially when a, a new child's coming out, a new child coming out, you have to give almost them a little bit more attention than you give your regular kids. That might sound bad. That might sound like, what are you talking about? But they're coming into a new place. They don't know you. They don't know your house. They don't know anything about you. And they came from a um, difficult situation already. So you have to kind of put yourself out there and really make them feel welcome into your home. Um, what I do is I give them teddy bears. I make them because a lot of kids tend to like that kind of thing. Um, I set out a whole thing on my table for them so they could feel welcome, like face mask, hand mask. Some kids are not used to that. The girl who came here um, last time wasn't really with the, the, the feet mask she liked, the hand mask, not so much. Um, I didn't do the face mask with them. Cause honestly, I don't like things on KK face, so I didn't put nothing on her face. Um, and I don't know what she's allergic to, so I didn't want to put nothing on her face. And she's like, big old eye when she gets up in the morning or nothing. But um, I gave her lip gloss. I gave her new toothbrush. I gave her a lot of things to make her feel like this is her home. Like, this is a place where she's welcome in. And she definitely felt that because she's, you know, she liked it. She wanted to stay here, but something, uh, some other stuff arose. <laughs> what um nobody expected, even the agency, and she had to be taken out of my home. Um, not really taken out. I had to give. I had to leave her somewhere, and they took her from that place. That's all I gotta say. Um, uh, con is you just don't know what kind of kid you're coming coming your home. So you, it could be anything. Um. It could be anything that could happen, to be honest. So we have to just be aware and mindful and pray about it and make sure that this is what you want to do. Um, you can have some crazy parents. Some of these parents, they will work hard for their kids. Some of the parents are not going to work hard, but they're going to say they're going to work hard. Like, they they say it, but the actions that they're saying is not it. So, um, yeah. Some parents, they, they want to do the best for their kids. They just honestly can't. They, they want to. But they can't, they can't put themselves out of the situation that they're in and make it better. And that's okay. Some people um, end up giving the kids up adoption. They have more kids after that. And it seems like it's not fair because the second batch of kids they have, they're wonderful parent for. But they just couldn't make it for the first. You know, it's just like every situation is different. And um, you just have to keep your eyes open and be there for the children because that's what it's really about. Be there for the children and the next to the family. That's how I see it. Um, what's going to be in the best interest of the, the child? If you can, I have a wonderful caseworker. Oh my God, the new one I got, she's amazing. She's always on it. If I need to call her anytime, she doesn't care. Um, she's amazing. I feel like everybody should have a caseworker like that. She's, it seems like she's so hardworking from what I see so far. And I know I'm not her only kid on the docket. And if I called her, it's very rare that I call her and she don't answer her phone or she don't answer a text or something like that. It's very rare. Um, let's see. I'm recording! Girl. But, um, that's just some of the things that I feel like I have a con about. Um, I think it can be different, especially if they come from a different background than you. You just have to get to, I, I, I say it's a prom, prom, a pro or con. It could be a pro in a way that, like, example, if a person is Jewish and you're not, you can kind of learn about their stuff. To me, I don't think Judaism is that far from Christianity, so you just bring the first part of the Bible, I bring the whole thing. Um, I think if a different religion, it might be a sticky situation for me, but if, if they're Hispanic and I'm Jamaican, well, I'm not if I'm Jamaican, I am Jamaican, so it would be cool in a pro, if you think about it, to learn about their culture. Like, their food is bomb, bro. So, um, I think those are pros. You could bring that some of that culture in your home, even if you're not from that place. Um, you still have to make them feel like they're at home. Um, so I think that would be a good situation. That's a pro, you know, get to learn about different backgrounds, different beliefs. Probably not beliefs. I'm not really about mixing my belief like that. But different, like, how people do different things. you just be surprised. Um, what else? What's another con? I'm not trying to focus on cons, but I'm just thinking of, like, cons. Um, when you have other kids, you just have to be mindful. Don't make the kids you have in your house already feel like they're left out of things. Um, kind of, because my daughter is six and this baby's just turned one in February. It's very difficult because she doesn't walk unless you hold her hand. Um, so I said, I want a baby who walks <laughs> and almost by it won't be fully budget, but almost by training or something. Um, but I love her so much, I would like, I wouldn't want to give her back anyway, you know. Um, but Kiki's like, I want a next child, and the next child needs to be able to play because she the girl, she plays with the baby, but. She can't play as much because she doesn't understand. She doesn't comprehend like KK six. So I would say that's why I would. I always wanted to have my kids back to back to back. 
I didn't want a big gap like this, so I'm definitely want to get some foster kids kind of fill in the gap between KK and this baby that I have. Um, I want to call it this, but if you don't know, you can't say the baby's name on camera, so that's what I'm saying. This baby, I feel bad saying it like that, but um, or BB, you can call her that too. Um, but having a big gap is it's not it. I don't have people, they do big gap. I'm like, nah, I need to have my kids. That's how much I had my kids back to back to back to back. Um, but now I'm getting older, so I don't even know how I'm going to be able to do that. I might not be able to, I might probably just end up adopting on the rest of my kids. I think about that this morning, I was like, I might not be able to have more kids. <laughs> if y'all don't know, I don't have sex out of wedlock, so that's why um, I can just go out there and just, you know, bam somebody and just have kids. Um, I have to get married first. Um, and I want to get married first, so yeah, not the point. Um, get married again, I should say. It will my second, it'll be my second marriage, not my first. But not the point. That's how we came here for this on this video. So, um, I think really thinking about things like that can really affect um, how you foster, how you do activities, and you got to think about um, if you do girls or boys, and you're especially with a single parent, are most of the activities going to be the same, or is it going to be different? Because boys like to do like maybe football, and KK does it. But if they do football and chilling, then they could probably be on the same team. That's easier. But if, if you want to do football and your daughter's in gymnastics, it might be two different days at the same time. It's like, how can you juggle that? So you got to think about what gender you're taking, what age you're taking. Um, another problem is a baby's one and could kick a six. I guess it'll work out. I don't know. I would have been like issues because my kid is about to be second grade. Maybe the next kid I get like in kindergarten, first grade. So at least, most times they don't like to take the kids out of school they're in. But I guess if they stay with me long enough, they could probably get changed from school the next year. And I'll just put the child in KK school to kind of have not like, all right, KK is in like a, a school, right? But she's not in public school. So um, if I have a kid in my house in public school, they're going to have always different calendar things. So that also could be a problem. That could be a bind if your child, one child's in charter school, public school, private school, and it's all these different things, you know? So it's like, it's better if um, they're around the same age and they hopefully, like what happened with the, the girl I had before, they end up picking, getting somebody come to come here and pick her up and bring her to school on an Uber every day and bring her back to my home. Um, but they also could do busing to pick up that child have an IEP. There's different things you can do, but I just feel like it's better for a while they could have the kid go to that school but then they could put the kids in the school that your kids are in to kind of make it easier i think my school's honestly what my daughter's in excellente excellente caliente um it's just it could be a lot when the kids especially the kids are way in age because taking six and baby's just one i'm basically starting over and it's not like my basic my child and you just never know and if they're even gonna stay with you they could, a kid could stay with you for years all of a sudden the parents get it together and they take the kid away so but if foster care, said 15 months, but the thing about it, if parents are doing something good on the 11th month, they start the whole clock over again. So that's why, that's kind of like screwing. It hurts your heart almost because like you with this child for years and they get just ripped away from you. That's also a con um, that you give this child so much love and so much growth and so much protection and they just rip, like literally rip. It's like worse than a band-aid. Like it's crazy. But anyway, I hope I'm not all over the place. I hope you understand my video. Guys, please comment. Please subscribe. Please help your girl out. I'm just saying, don't don't leave me out here hanging, bro. Don't leave me out here hanging. Like y'all be really trying to come for me and not say nothing in the comments, but I need you to do that, okay? Cause your girl need to grow, okay? I'm, I'm at a story chat. Like the whole big thing on YouTube is story time channels. I'm got no stories. I'm very boring. I'm very Virgin Mary esque. I'm very tame kind of person. So I'm got no story times. I don't fight. I'm too old for that. Like. People be in their 30s and 40s fighting. I'm like, why though? Why? I don't see the need. Um, <laughs> I don't. Mm -mm. My girl. People in their 20s. I feel like after 18, you just stop. After 18, you just stop fighting. Like, you go to big, big, big girl jail. And if you're black, you probably go to big girl jail like 15 or 16. They don't, they don't play. Um, the, I guess we don't know the state you are living in. But I see people who are minors go in big man jail. Big, big man things. All right? So. Um, it's just be good, be good to each other, be amazing, be, be, be a foster parent and be a good foster parent. Um, yeah, these kids need us, they need more foster families out here, so please definitely try to sign up for that if you can in your local area. Call 311. I'll tell you right now in New York City, it's 311. I'm gonna give you a foster parent number, maybe because it was a like it was at the end of the COVID, like last year. They took months. 
months, months to call me back. If you need a foster home in your new city, contact me. My foster family, my foster agency is looking for people. So if you're in New York City and you want to um be able to be a foster parent, this is the place to go. Um, they have it in I want to say three boroughs, no two boroughs, and Long Island. So yeah, so Brooklyn, Queens, and Long Island. Basically, that's what they are working with. So if you want to do that and you want to be part of this family foster care family definitely sign up for that guys and ask me about it in the comments okay guys bye i hope it wasn't too long i hope i got to here if i got to this part give me an apple downstairs i said downstairs you yeah, know what i mean in the comments <laughs>